IVF stands for in vitro fertilisation. What this means is that the eggs are retrieved from the woman, the eggs and the sperm are put together in the laboratory to create an embryo. The embryo is then developed in the laboratory and chosen and placed back into the woman's uterus. IVF has come a long way since the first baby was born almost 40 years ago. Those babies have now grown up and had their own babies. And with modern treatment regimes, changes with new generation drugs, IVF can be safe, simple and effective. So why might a couple consider doing IVF? There are actually lots of different reasons why people might need IVF. One simple one is if a woman has tubal factor infertility, meaning that the sperm and egg can't meet. Another common reason for needing IVF is when the male sperm count is low, and this affects quite a number of men. One of the other reasons why IVF might be used is for unexplained infertility, where something more subtle to do with egg sperm interaction may be the problem, and that can only be discovered in the laboratory. There are more advanced techniques in terms of genetic screening that may mean people do IVF as a method of choice to avoid genetically inherited conditions in their children. Whilst there are a number of different fertility treatments, things like tracking a cycle, ovulation induction, surgery for endometriosis for example, IVF is a common treatment option that couples choose because it is safe, effective and has the highest pregnancy rate per month. So once you and your doctor have decided that IVF is the correct treatment option, you go through a process in the clinic whereby you are familiarised with the medications involved, you spend time with the nurses, learning more about your treatment and how it's going to fit into your lifestyle and work. And then on day one, you collect medication and start your injections on day two of your period. Injections are self-administered. You can either give it to yourself or give your husband a job to do, but it's actually quite easy. This is the medication, it's in a pen. The medication's here the buttons here and you just press the button to inject into the skin. That's done once a day followed by a blood test five days later. Blood tests are done in the morning prior to work so IVF for most people is fitted around their normal daily activities. On day six a blood test shows oestrogen levels and shows us how the body's responding to the medication and then medications might be adjusted based on that result. A second drug is started to stop you ovulating and every couple of days you come in in the morning for a blood test and an ultrasound to monitor how many eggs are developing. In a normal month, when you ovulate, what happens is the brain sends a message called follicle stimulating hormone down to the ovary. It makes the little follicles in your ovary grow, but only one follicle actually wins and grows big. The other eight or nine follicles dissolve away as that one follicle ovulates and releases an egg. In IVF, what we do is we use that same hormone that your brain's producing, but in a higher dose, to allow all nine of those follicles to all grow up together. So in essence, we get more eggs per month out of the ovary, but we're not stripping the ovary of eggs. A final injection is given to mature the eggs inside the follicle, and the day surgery procedure is scheduled for 36 hours later. On the day of the egg collection procedure, you will need to have a day off work. You'll come to the day surgery in the morning, see the anaesthetist and go through into the operating theatre. At that point, you will have a light sedation and a needle will be placed into the ovary under ultrasound guidance through the vagina. The fluid is collected into a test tube and the test tube is passed to the scientist who's in the operating theatre and with a high magnification microscope, looks at the fluid to find your eggs. In the laboratory, the eggs and sperm are placed together in a dish and put into an incubator. The incubator controls the environment to best support the embryo with the right gases and the right proteins and nutrients. There are two different methods that the laboratory can use for fertilisation. The first is standard IVF, where the sperm is placed on top of the eggs and the sperm are still required to undertake many of the natural processes to fertilise the egg. The second option is something called ICSI, this is where under high magnification, a small sperm is chosen, selected and placed into the egg with a needle. This, for some people, can increase the chance of fertilisation. Whilst the scientists are in the lab with the egg and sperm, you will be in recovery, spending an hour or two recovering with a cup of tea, something to eat, and then you'll head off home for the afternoon. The number of eggs that are retrieved in any one cycle can vary quite significantly 
for a woman from month to month and also depending on their age and their own individual ovarian reserve. In the laboratory, the eggs are placed with sperm and the number of eggs that fertilise can also vary quite significantly. This can be affected also by age and egg quality, but also by the number of sperm, how motile the sperm are and how capable they are to bind and fertilise the egg. On average, about 70% of eggs will fertilise in an IVF cycle and about one or two of those will make it to day five for embryo transfer. The day of embryo transfer is a really exciting day. The embryologist chooses the best embryo to place back in the uterus. You need about one or two hours off work. The procedure's done awake. It's quite similar to having a pap smear. It's done under ultrasound guidance and it's not a painful process. The best embryo is placed into the womb and any other really good quality embryos can be frozen for future use. For a lot of people, the process of IVF is nerve wracking and a bit scary. But I think what's important to understand is that the process can be tailored to you. There are medications, for example, we can use if you're scared of needles. There are medications we can use that last seven days and take out seven needles. There are things like if you're worried about an anaesthetic, the procedure can be done with you awake with local anaesthetic. So it's really important to realise that IVF can be tailored to the individual and we can deal with any concerns that might arise. Following the embryo transfer, there's about a 10 day wait to find out if the process has been successful. The pregnancy hormone HCG becomes positive in the blood at that point. So in the meantime, we recommend that you go back to your normal life and generally just try to keep busy. One of the fantastic things about IVF is the ability to freeze embryos for future use. This means that you don't have to go through every month the process of injections and stimulation and blood tests. The embryo can just be thawed out and following ovulation it can be placed into the body. The other thing is that if you do get pregnant with your IVF cycle and you have other embryos in use, you can come back two, three, four or five years later to have an embryo transferred and that embryo still has the success rate of the age from when it was created. And I think that's a really fascinating part of IVF. When a couple chooses an IVF clinic, there are lots of different things that might come into that decision. For example, it might be based on the doctor you want to see. It might be based on the convenience of where the clinic's located with work and home. But one of the most important things is the quality of the laboratory in the choice of IVF service. Repromed prides itself on the quality of the laboratory and as a result, we have some of the highest pregnancy success rates in the country.